I'm very proud to lead the National Chemical Emergency Centre, which is very often referred to as NCEC. Um, we have uh, just over 30 people in the team, uh, a team of people who have expertise in a number of different regulatory areas, as well as being chemists and being able to offer that very important advice to our clients in the event of a chemical incident. The NCEC was set up in 1973 as a direct result of a number of incidents that were happening at the time, and in particular, a tanker accident um, where a nurse went to help the driver and succumbed to the fumes that she inhaled from the release because of the tanker crash. The government said that's enough, we need to have a team of people who are able to provide advice and they set up uh, the National Chemical Emergency Centre at that time. Every year we deal with about 4,000 calls and about uh, 400 of those are specifically for the police and fire and rescue services. Um, the rest come from our private sector clients, um, of which we have um, over 500 now, and a number of those calls are coming um, from uh, international clients or their international customers. With the wide variety of calls that we get, so it's sometimes members of the public, sometimes the fire service, some people have no knowledge of chemicals, others are quite proficient, um, the days can be incredibly varied. My more rewarding calls are when you have a member of the public that calls up and they're scared because either them or their child or their dog has eaten something it shouldn't have. And you can take them from, from panic to calm them down to get the information that you need to provide the advice and then advise on suitable steps. And it's a very nice journey uh, through that call. Recruitment's vitally important uh, as part of a joined up HR strategy for us. Um, because it's, um, it's essential for us to really assess the skills of the uh, c candidates to get people that are right for this role and that will thrive in the chemical emergency response environment. And in terms of skills, what we're looking for is, of course, technical skills. We need people who are uh, ac academic chemists and understand how chemicals behave, but both in a controlled environment like a laboratory and also an uncontrolled environment, as you would see in a chemical emergency. And then we're also looking for communication skills because people need to be able to communicate under pressure in a live emergency environment. And part of that is about um, understanding um, very quickly at the beginning of a call how to deal with a particular caller and their own communication style and how to adjust your own style to match uh, the style of the caller. And the third thing besides the technical and communication skills is really the ability to solve problems. Um, and the, the main part of that is around assimilating information quickly during an emergency. We've got a very robust training programme to make sure that we're 100% confident that our team are capable of dealing with pretty much anything, even at 4am alone in the building. We start out doing the or dealing with the side of chemistry which you don't really encounter during your degree. So very large scale chemistry and um, home cooking chemistry. So things like how to deal with an incident which involves a really large scale spillage. We train our emergency response team. The first thing we do is we, we fill in those gaps. We give them the information and the, the experience with dealing with very large scale emergencies, the things they've got to look out for, um, you know, plume evolution, large exotherms, what practical measures the emergency services have access to to deal with things. So finding 20 tonnes of neutralising agent at four in the morning is, is a challenge, but um, containing a uh, large spillage within a bund and then removing it via vacuum tanker is something that you wouldn't necessarily do in the lab, but you can do on the road, for example. And then we go through all of the uh, interesting combinations of chemicals that you can, you can do if you're, say, you know, decided that today you just wanted to make meth, or you know, today you've mixed the following cleaning chemicals and suddenly realise that you shouldn't, and the, the consequences of realising that you shouldn't are you know, the evolution of an unpleasant gas which is now filling your home, and you'd really like someone to come and help you out with that. And then from there, we start familiarising everyone with our telephone systems. We start off with role play exercises, so we'll have an experienced member of the team pretending to be a caller with our new trainee. And once they're comfortable doing that, we unleash them into the world with supervision. So uh, they then start taking real calls. We can set them up so that they get certain lines coming into them, lines that, let's say, will typically receive um, less severe calls. And then once they're comfortable doing that, we then fire up all the other lines and they start getting a wider range of emergencies. They start getting the, the, you know, the, the corporate crises, the calls from the emergency services, you know, the, the sharper incidents where the consequences are more severe. And so once they get to the stage where we're really satisfied, they don't really need any input, they're, they're, they're driving the course to the resolution themselves, they, they know what they need to be doing in all the situations they're getting exposed to, we then have a pair of tests where we put them in a, in a little room and we bombard them with 
uh, difficult scenarios. We see how they deal with those situations, whether we're, we're happy, we then give them a little bit of time just to work on anything that they're missing, and then we have another test at which point, if they pass that, then they're fully fledged emergency responders, they can go on the phone unsupervised and uh, take all our calls.